Hi everyone, in a previous video, which by the way I highly recommend to watch first, we talked about how the eigen decomposition helps us to decompose the square matrix using its eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Thus, a natural question arises. How can we factorize any matrix, not just the subset of square matrices? Well, that's where the singular value decomposition, or SVD in short, comes into play, which can be used to factorize any rectangular matrix, not just square matrices. In short, the singular values decomposition of any rectangular matrix A is given by the product of three matrices, U, sigma, and V transpose. U is an orthogonal matrix and contains the eigenvectors of AA transpose, also known as the left singular vectors of A, and V is also an orthogonal matrix which contains the eigenvectors of A transpose A, also known as the right singular vectors of A. Finally, the third matrix, sigma, is a rectangular diagonal matrix that has the same dimensions as A and contains the singular values of A in descending order, which are essentially the square roots of the common eigenvalues of A A transpose and A transpose A, and represent the importance of each singular vector in the decomposition. Now, the fun part. How can we visualize this transformation? Well, because U and V are orthonormal matrices, they are nothing more than rotations or reflections in the first and second dimension of matrix A. On the other hand, if the matrix sigma, which contains the singular values of A, would have been a square matrix, then it would simply represent a stretch of the singular vectors. However, we said that the matrix sigma is a rectangular diagonal matrix, and thus it contains the singular values on the mine diagonal of the square matrix containing the rectangular matrix, and zeros in rest. Therefore, this matrix can be visualized as a stretch in the direction of singular values, but only up to a certain point, followed by a projection onto a lower or higher dimensional space, depending on whether the matrix A has more rows or columns. To better understand what the sigma matrix does, let's consider an example. Imagine that we have the following 3 by 2 matrix sigma and the following circle in the 2D plane we want to project. The first thing we do is to stretch it along the x and y dimensions using the singular values and then add the z dimension. On the other hand, if the sigma matrix had the following form, so a 2 by 3 matrix, and we use the following sphere in the 3D space, we would again stretch along the x and y dimensions and then remove the z dimension. Pretty cool, right? So, to summarize, the singular value decomposition can factorize any matrix into a product of three matrices. One, we have the matrix U, which is a rotation matrix. We have the matrix sigma that stretches the vector space and then adds or eliminates dimensions. And three, we have the matrix V, which is another rotation matrix. And that's basically what the singular value decomposition does. And before ending this video, I would like to talk a little bit about the practical applications of singular value decomposition. Firstly, SVD is widely used in image compression, where the idea is to reduce the dimensionality of the image data while preserving the most important information. This is done by representing the image as a matrix, where each pixel is an element in the matrix, and then applying SVD to the matrix which decomposes it into three matrices, U, sigma, and V. Then, we discard the smaller singular values in sigma, which correspond to the least important features of the image, and reconstruct the image using the remaining singular values and the corresponding columns of U and V, resulting in a compressed representation which contains only the most important features of the image and that requires less storage space. Additionally, SVD is a key component in many recommender systems, which are used to suggest products or services to users based on their past behavior and preferences. To achieve that, we first create the user item interaction matrix, where each row corresponds to a user, each column corresponds to an item, and the elements in the matrix represent the ratings or interactions. By applying the singular value decomposition to this user item interaction matrix, 
We can again reduce the dimensionality of the matrix while preserving the essential information about user preferences and item properties. And the resulting low matrix can be used to identify patterns and relationships between users and items, allowing us to make personalized recommendations. I won't go into more details here about how this is done because I intend to create a more in-depth video about how recommender systems work, so I'll leave this explanation for another time. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button if you found this explanation helpful and don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned with the new videos I create on this channel. See you next time. Bye bye.